Thank you for uh, coming to our second session on video or live. And uh, we're going to be uh, looking today at uh, pursuing financial freedom, our theme for <clears throat> the entire course of uh, pursuing the joy of generosity. But today, take a look at this piece, which has to do with earning and spending. Now, you say, I thought we we're going to talk about money and we're going to talk about some other things. Well, we'll talk about God's design. How do we even have anything to be generous with, particularly, specifically, in the financial area? And God has set up a particular cycle uh, that w so that we have finances to share and uh, that we're stewards and managers over. So that's our topic for today. Again, this is a spiritual conversation, so let me uh, pray and ask God to be our teacher here by the Spirit and embed in our hearts those things that will help us uh, going, <clears throat> going forward in our daily life. Father in heaven, again, we are so grateful that uh, you not only promised your presence uh, wherever we are to the ends of the earth, as uh, Jesus said, but also <clears throat> you promised to instruct us You've given your book to reveal to us how we can lead that life is, that is full and abundant. And uh, Father, we're, we're enjoying these <clears throat> weeks of study uh, where we're specifically looking at how we can be better managers and stewards of the things that you've given to us. So God, it's a great privilege to be, sit under your, the uh, tutelage of your book and your spirit who's promised to be our, our guide into all truth. So help us to uh, hear and see truth today. Again, thank you for the people that are uh, entering into this, uh, this journey and embedding in their thinking the things that you say about how we can please you with the things you've entrusted to us. I ask you to be our teacher in Christ's name. Amen. Now, last week we looked at this diagram. You probably drew it and put it in your book. And the uh, point of the diagram was that uh, we want to start with, when we talk about finance and God's word, to get at the why. If we just talk about what or how, we will be lot, a lot less motivated to follow through when the hard times come. So we're, we're centering down, we're focusing on the why of being a good steward, the why of pursuing the joy of generosity. At the end of the, the last class, we looked at the why in a couple specifics. After going over the fact that God is the owner, he's a generous God, he shares with his people and asks us to be generous, why would we want to be generous, especially in a world where uh, the, the message from the secular culture is just accumulate and be selfish? Why would we want to be generous? We tried to lay down a couple of basic principles as a takeaway uh, from uh, the scripture that we looked at. And the first one is faithful management slash stewardship of our resources brings eternal rewards. They're not just benefits for uh, uh, just even while we're here on earth, but God does this incredible thing of letting us take our material possessions of time, talent, and treasure and convert them into eternal currency. Uh, the Treasure Principle book by Randy Alcorn unpacks that and says that we tend to just operate in the currency of this world. But God has given us an opportunity to transform that into eternal currency that will make a difference for all eternity. And the little phrase that we talked about in the last class was uh, what we do with Jesus will de determine where we spend eternity. What we do with our things will determine how we spend eternity. And this is a point uh, in the first observation here of the why. The second one is uh, even more profound in May, uh, may have been a new entry into our thinking of why would we would be generous. But last week, look, we looked at scripture of the generosity of God and how if we are going to be God-like, uh, it's the desire of God that we would reflect one characteristic of God, which is being a generous God. Now, a little aside on that, in the, if you... Look in your book and back to the list I gave you that God has a record of uh, being a very generous God. We started with <clears throat> Adam and Eve, went down to Abraham and Solomon, Job, and ended up with the widow Zarephath. Now, I teach this class uh, also on Sundays uh, here in between Wednesday when you were kind of the beta group for <laughs> this class uh, and Sunday, uh, God really uh, worked in my heart and saying, you know, all those historical people that you gave, that's true, but 
Don Reed, why shouldn't you be at the bottom of that list right after the widow of Zarephath? And that is so true. So if, you, if you're open to that page, I would ask you to put in there two words after the widow of Zarephath, my story. And on Sunday when I shared this class, uh, I told about my story in brief. And you know, God has been so generous to Don Reed. Grew up dirt poor, farmer, farmer family in New York, had nothing. And here, after the decades have passed and, you know, in the latter half of my life and journey, God has blessed me so much. So it's not just the historical figures and the rich people, but it comes down to every one of us. We may want to reflect on our story. So our generous living, the way we manage our resources, and share freely with others, holding it loosely is another term uh, to talk about that. Rather than tightly, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. But holding it loosely reflects the great generos generosity of our God. Now the values we talked about, and this is a repeating phrase, you may hear it almost every week, it's what we want for you, not what we want from you. The way we are approaching the discussion for this six weeks, as I mentioned last week, it's not a fundraising campaign. It is, in fact, opening the Word of God to see how our generous God opens up to us the possibility of eternal deposits, which are going to make a difference for all time and eternity. It's what we want for you, to discover those, begin to incorporate them into uh, our lives, not what we want from you. This is not a pledge campaign. I think it was Dave Ramsey who said, Live like no one else today so that you can live like no one else tomorrow. What does that mean? Well, we looked at, we'll look at the verse, in fact, again in a moment, of uh, not being conformed to this world, but being transformed. Uh, obviously, the way God asks us to conduct ourselves as followers of Him and of His Son Christ is a different way than the world pursues life. And Dave Ramsey uh, applied it in a fin financial way. Live like, live like no one else today, saving being generous, you know, holding things loosely, biblical principles, so that you can live like no one else tomorrow. In our uh, upcoming classes, we're going to see some uh, specific illustrations of how the world has just dug a hole for themselves, individually and, and uh, you know, corporately, globally, in the financial uh, area. And if we all go that way, then it's not going to be a fun tomorrow. We'll illustrate that going forward. Here's the uh, core verse, Romans 12, 2, where we don't want to be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our mind. Uh, and then we're going to find out how good God's perfect, pleasing, and goodwill is. That would be our uh, goal as we move through this class.